Hey y'all, Chelsea and Danny here. Enjoy this episode of Today's Homeowner here on YouTube. Everybody seems to want to remove the wall between the kitchen and the breakfast room. That's what we'll do this week. Today's Homeowner with Danny Lipford. Real projects for real homeowners with real solutions. Information and inspiration on improving your home from professional remodeler Danny Lipford. Welcome to the show this week. Now the owners of this home have looked for years for ways to make this small kitchen appear a little larger and to incorporate it in some way to the adjacent breakfast area. Well, here's what we're going to do. We'll take the wall cabinets we have here, move them around and position them right on the floor, right along this wall. Then we'll remove this whole section of wall and put in a nice countertop with a nice overhang so they can have a few bar stools. Then new countertops and the rest of the kitchen paint job on the outside of the cabinet, and we have made a tremendous difference in how the kitchen looks and how it functions, all at a very modest budget. Stay with us. The cabinets seem like they're in great shape. Welcome back to the show. I'm with Sharon Johnson, who's the homeowner. And Sharon, I know you've been waiting for this renovation for a while. Uh, how long have you been in the house? We bought it in 1995, so about seven years. Okay, all right. You've been thinking about this kitchen then probably ever since you've been in. For a while. It's just always been a little bit small and confining, so we want to do something different with it. It really makes a difference on the resale, too. Um, uh, I know you do a lot of banking and so forth, so you're dealing with real estate all the time. If, a, if you have an obsolete kitchen, it's really hard to sell that house. Well, that's true. And, of course, a lot of houses on the market these days, we're not interested in going anywhere for a while, but nice to think about down the road. Yeah. Well, you're in pretty good shape here. You really have a lot of cabinets. I notice a uh, pretty new appliances. I guess you've replaced those since you've been in the house. We've just gradually replaced them. They all needed replacing, so we bought one a year or something like that. I see. Okay. Now, we started doing a little bit of layout um, here, and this will be the line where we cut out the wall above this. It gives you a little idea. We'll have a backsplash that extends up to that um, right under the new countertop. But what about the new countertops? Are you going with something uh, similar to this color? No, we've really never cared for this, this <laughs> color. It's worked fine, you know, for, for our purposes so far. But we've got this new flooring that we put in a couple, three years ago, and we're hoping to go with something that kind of blends with that a little better. Okay, perfect, perfect. Now, in the breakfast room, um, I wanted to ask you in terms of kind of the arrangement of furniture because we kind of have a confined space here. And once we have that extended overhang, it's going to kind of crowd this a little bit. What do you have in mind as far as arrangement? We're going to have to wait and see how it looks when you guys get finished and you know, we'll rearrange. We may have to replace some furniture or whatever, but uh, we'll, we'll figure it out. Okay, all right. Of course, um, you realize when that wall comes down, we have two different types of wallpaper, impossible to match it because of the age of it. Uh, have you considered what you're going to do with those walls? Yeah, we've selected a, a color that we think will change the looks and, and kind of bring both rooms together. Oh, that's good. And we want to use the same above and below the chair rail. and. Uh, just looking forward to seeing how different that'll look. Okay, all right. Well, after everything's done, you probably can make some decisions on, you know, where this goes and maybe even uh, consideration of the light fixture, maybe change it to a ceiling fan or we may even have to relocate that to wherever the table ends up. Well, that's true. Uh, you know, the room may be off center or whatever, but I guess we can deal with that when, it, when we right. get to it. Well, you better get ready because everything's about to change real quick. Okay, good. Any successful demolition should begin with cover up and protecting the untouched surfaces from scratches and the rest of the house from dust. Removing the moldings carefully leaves you the option of reusing them again. Now this is especially important in the event that you're unable to match with the new trim and even if you can match it, recycling the old trim will create some real cost savings. Now these guys are pulling the nails from the back side to preserve the front side surface. Now by establishing the new height of the wall from the cabinet that will support the bar and cutting the drywall at that point, we're saving on finish work later and again reducing some of the dust. The unneeded part of the wall is removed from the breakfast area side. Then the same thing happens on the kitchen side. Now this is where you get your first glimpse of how much larger the area will appear and the change is fabulous. Now some of the studs of the door headers are carefully removed so as not to disturb the 12 inches of drywall that's remaining at the ceiling. Now this way no ceiling work will have to be done later on. While the electrical boxes and wires are pried loose from the studs, 
a quick check in the attic reveals that this wall supports an overlap of ceiling joist. To prevent any ceiling sag while the wall is out, a temporary support is constructed a few feet away. Then the rest of the studs can be marked at the counter height, cut off, and removed. Two by four blocks will fill the gaps between the lower remaining studs. The electrician is called in to figure out how to reroute all of the wiring. Now with a little creative notching and slight drywall removal, the path is cleared for the new framing. To replace the support from the old wall, a new beam is constructed from two 2x12s with a layer of plywood between. The beam is carefully set into place and the supporting or pack studs are tapped into place to support it. The studs are nailed off and the drywall is attached to the new beam behind. Next, our simple solution. Get ready to review your fix-it list as Danny and home repair expert Joe Truini show you this week's simple solution. Brought to you by DuPont Tyvek. Build it once, build it right. Joe, a lot of your simple solution segments deal with organizing around the house. That's right. Well, let me see what you can do with this. Well, this is my favorite drawer in the kitchen, the old junk drawer. If your drawer looks like this, there's no reason you can't organize it so make it easier to find things. Now, they make ready-made organizers you can buy at a hardware store or at a home center. But I'll show how to make a divider you wouldn't laugh, make it really easy to organize any junk drawer. First, we clean out the drawer, and then we measure the width and the length. Then, using those dimensions, I draw a layout of how I want the dividers to be organized. Next, in the workshop, I measure and cut the lattice strips to fit into the drawer. Then, I lay them out to match the drawing and mark each intersection to be cut, half the depth of the lattice, which in this case is 7 8 inch, and the full thickness of the lattice, which is 5 16 inch thick. This will create an interlocking edge lap joint. To speed up the job, I clamp the four strips together and cut all four joints at the same time using a coping saw. A small screwdriver works well to break out the waste piece from each joint. I then test fit the pieces together, and now they're ready to be set into the drawer. Well, Joe, how did everything work out? I think it worked out well. What do you think? Now, a lot more organized than it was before. Yeah, I, I like it particularly for batteries. It makes it easy to find the batteries because we have a single compartment here. The only thing I couldn't fit was, the, was this hammer, but because the dividers are shallow, you can put it in top and still close the drawer. That's great. Well, my house is next. Welcome back to the show. Now with all the demolition complete in between the breakfast room and the kitchen, we can start the trim out process. Now Paul and Dennis are in the process of putting a one by six cap board here where we installed our beam earlier. Then they'll be taking care of this piece of wood that'll be installed out on this end. Then we'll be able to run our casing molding all the way around this opening to make it match all the other cased openings in the house. Now they've also been able to complete the installation of this that was once the wall cabinet here and now sitting here as a base cabinet. Now all of the doors here as well as the doors on the rest of the kitchen have been removed so that they could be taken to our painter shop and spray painted because it's always better to have that sprayed finish than to brush paint. But the cabinets themselves would be too hard to, to um, spray so they're all being brush painted on the outside. The new doors will go on and then we'll be ready for the rest of the work that's taking place in this kitchen renovation. Now one thing that you run into when you're relocating cabinets many times, a few rough edges like we have here. This originally was positioned against the wall so it had an unfinished end on it. Now what we'll plan on doing is put a thin layer of cabinet grade plywood right on the outside to veneer over it and then once the painters painted it, it'll look like all of this was the original part of the construction. Also, we have an end cap there that we'll have to do the same thing to in order to finish that out. Then the next step will be replacement of the countertops. Now the biggest part of the countertops will involve this large section that'll go here, about 30 inches, providing for the overhang for the bar stools, and of course all of the other laminate will be replaced as well. Now this is a plastic laminate. It's considered a custom countertop because of the work that's involved in fabricating this type of countertop for a kitchen like this. The cabinet shop builds the top from plywood and wood strips based on the measurements we've taken in the kitchen. Now when the counter sections are the right size and shape, the plastic laminate is set in place and cut with a router to be slightly larger than the surface it'll actually cover. Narrow pieces for the edges and backsplashes are cut with a saw. 
Then contact cement is applied to both surfaces and the laminate is stuck in place. Next, the excess is trimmed off all around the counter and any rough or sharp edges are smoothed out with a file. Our countertops are all in and I think we accomplished just what the homeowners wanted by having a countertop that would really complement and blend in with the existing kitchen floor. Now the removal of the countertops took quite a while because we wanted to be real careful with not only the existing cabinets but also the removal of the existing sink since we're reusing it once the new countertops were installed. New countertops were in and you can see that's made a really big difference in the overall look of this kitchen. Another thing that's made a big difference, our painter was back with our sprayed cabinet doors, reinstalled those with new hardware, painted everything else, man, really turns out nice in here. Really gave it an updated look. Another thing we did along the way here is we added three shelves with a rounded corner here right on this end where we had the raw end of the cabinet. Now this will serve, of course, good purposes with books, you know, for putting any cookbooks or any little accessories that the homeowner may choose to put in here a little bit later. Now, the painter has a little more work to do because some of the new casing that we put in will have to be repainted, um, needing the three coats, and he has one on there. And also, another thing that happened during the project, the homeowners decided to rearrange the breakfast room here and position the table over by the window. In order to make that look like its original construction, we had to relocate the fixture from the center of the room, which was relocated in our drywall finishers already patched that and added the texture back to it, and our electrician moved it over to this side, which will be the logical place for it directly over the relocated table. Now also, we have a little patchwork down here to do on the floor where the old wall was, and uh, fortunately, the homeowners held on to some of the flooring they had installed several years ago, so we'll have our flooring contractor drop by and lace these pieces in, and you won't even be able to see that. Another project that'll take a little bit of time is dealing with all of the wallpaper. Now we'll have to remove all of the wallpaper, do a little wall prep before the new wallpaper comes in that'll tie the area together better than anything else we've done. We'll look at all of that right after our best new product of the week. Now let's join Danny at the Home Center to check out the best new products. Brought to you by The Home Depot. On many of your home improvement projects around your home, you'll find that you need some type of socket set to take care of any nut or bolt that you may encounter. Now in the past, you may have gotten out your socket set, opened it up, maybe a few of the sockets are missing, or you're just having to search for the right size. Now it's a lot easier with the Gator Grip Universal Socket. Now this particular type of socket's been around a little while, and you may have seen it on television and really wondered if it worked at all, but this particular one's well built with 54 steel alloyed rods that are spring loaded that'll grip from a quarter inch all the way up to three quarters of an inch, and in metric sizes from seven millimeters up to 19 millimeters. So it really is well built and actually transfers the weight or the strength that you need for taking bolts on and off to the outside of this because of the steel rods. Now you can use it with a regular ratchet that comes with it within the kit or if you want to use your power drill or, or cordless drill then you have an adapter that will adapt right into that to take care of that. Now this is also good from the standpoint that because of its design will take care of loosening or tightening any wing bolts or eye bolts or some of those real stubborn rusty nuts or bolts that you may encounter. This will take care of it as well. And all of this, all three pieces, for less than $16. Well, things are really moving along on this kitchen renovation, and we're at the point where we're installing the new wallpaper. But before the new wallpaper is installed, a lot of wall prep has to take place. In this case, removing several layers of wallpaper that was previously on the wall. Now, if you've ever tried that, you know that can be a tricky job, but someone that knows a few tips that'll make it a little easier is Donald Steele. Donald, how do homeowners really get started when you have to go through the task of removing paper? What are some tips? Well, first off, you have to remove the top layer of paper, which will usually come off dry. Sometimes you have to wet it with a sponge or whatever to make it come off. Mm -hmm. And then you get your pump-up sprayer, and you put you a little bit of wallpaper remover in it, uh -huh. pump it up, spray it on the wall, and you may have to spray it twice, depending on how it starts to dry out on you. Now, does that help you to use any hot water on that? Actually, hot water will a lot of times take it off better, and then at times, depending on the paper, it won't it won't help you at all because it'll make it dry out twice as fast. Okay. Okay. So then you just start 
peeling if it'll peel, and if it won't peel, you get a six inch scraper and you just start scraping along the, the edge <laughs> until you actually scrape it all off. But I've seen a lot of homeowners and professionals really scar the walls up a good and, bit. With and that. it's gonna happen, it's mm -hmm. gonna happen. You're gonna scar the walls, you're gonna cut little places into it, so therefore you have to come back with sheetrock mud and you just mud it over, sand it out smooth, and you're ready to go. Okay, all right, you make it sound very simple. <laughs> now, now what about the installation of paper? How do you get started on that? Because I know you're just getting started on the installation of the paper, but first sheets are really important. Oh, you're right, we have to, we have to get everything leveled up good start at, at the best place that you can lay it out where you don't have a bunch of little small pieces to put right. in. Uh -huh. And then, uh, of course, just just gluing it and keeping it nice and straight. And as you turn your corners and stuff, and a lot of corners aren't going to be plumb either. Right. So, so you're going to have that to deal with. But you know, every time you come out, you want to lay your level on it, just plumb it out. Okay. Well, I know you have a lot of paper to hang, and we'll let you get back to that. Donald and Dale did a great job on the wallpaper. In fact, it looks like a nice faux finish on the wall if you look at it from a few feet away. Now that's kind of how you should look at and select wallpaper from a few feet away with a larger sample. So instead of just a small sample to bring back to your home, try to get a good large piece, put it on the wall of the room that you're planning on hanging it in, and then step back and look at it. That'll give you a more realistic look at how the wallpaper is going to be. Now pretty much everything here is complete. Our painter's been back with all the final coats on our woodwork, and our flooring contractor dropped by to uh, take care of the patch on the floor. They started the repairs by heating the old flooring to soften the glue holding it in place, then pried it back up to the nearest joint. The new pieces were carefully cut to match and then glued in place to completely disguise the repair. After our Around the Yard segment, we'll share with you more information about this kitchen that may be valuable to you if you're considering a kitchen update. Now let's go outside for Around the Yard, lawn and garden tips you can use straight from the experts. Brought to you by TimberTech Engineered Decking Systems. Less work, more life. I'm with Dr. Trey Rogers, who's a turf expert. And Trey, homeowners have a hard time making decisions on products for their home, but even harder figuring out what kind of fertilizer they need for their home. That's right. Well, the first thing to remember, though, is that your garden center has pre-selected fertilizers that are best for you and your area. So have a little faith in them. Okay. Well, what about all these numbers, though? They range from high to low. Um, what do they really mean? Well, these are the numbers, are percentages of nitrogen, the second number is percentage of phosphorus, and the third number is percentage of potassium. These are the major elements that are necessary for us to grow good turf grass. Okay, when do you use which in terms of the time of the year? Yeah, what I like to tell people is that during the fall of the year, use a complete fertilizer, which means all three of these elements are present. Mm -hmm. During the spring and the summer, you can go ahead and use a fertilizer that maybe the dominant element is the nitrogen, the first one. Okay. So the phosphorus and the potassium, not quite as important. Okay. Now, I've still, I'm still a little confused because sometimes at the garden center, I'll see identical bags, identical numbers, covering the identical amount of space, but there'll be three times the difference in cost. Exactly. Now, usually what's happening in this situation is that the fertilizer that costs more is going to last longer. Okay, it's th the one that costs a little bit less may only last three or four weeks. The other one's going to last three or four months. No matter what you do, follow the label directions and remember twice as much is never twice as good. What a great space. Sharon and her family are really going to enjoy this new layout. They've been tolerating their small but functional kitchen and separate dining room for years. By removing the wall between the rooms and updating the cabinets and countertops, we've made a big change. The relocated wall cabinet created an excellent base for the bar as well as a great decorating opportunity. And moving the light fixture and breakfast table also allowed room for a small reading area to be added. This project was fairly simple and fairly reasonable in cost, costing less than $4,500 to take care of everything. If you did it yourself, you'd save about half that amount. But before you remove any wall in your house, check with a professional because it may be like this one where you have to install a beam to support ceiling joists that we showed you before in the show. I hope you enjoyed this week's show. We'll see you next week. I'm Danny Lifter. Hey, thanks for watching this episode of Today's Homeowner. And don't forget to comment, like, and hit the bell icon so that we can notify you when new videos are posted. And don't go anywhere. Click around and continue the home improving fun.